the empath, and the chains of attachment. Empaths are notoriously terrible at getting to a point of zero fucks. Normal people are able to walk away from many provocations. They say their piece, they put up their hand, they stroll away. They're often not necessarily taken in the first place. That doesn't seem right to me. Whoa, I'm not putting up with this. This is too much. And they back away from the overtures of a narcissist. Invariably, they look at the way that this individual has behaved and they think, I haven't got time for this kind of Mickey Mouse bullshit. I'm out of here. I've got better things to do with my time. They recognise there's little to be gained in trying to engage with this person. They never listen to what I've got to say. I'm going to save my breath. I'm going to go and talk to somebody where I can have a meaningful exchange with them, not waste my breath on this loser. To some extent, it's driven by selfishness, that narcissistic trait, whereby they recognise that their own time is valuable and therefore they don't want to waste it on somebody who's not giving anything. They recognise that the individual concerned is just simply problematic and there's little to be gained in trying to get them to come round, to try and persuade them, to try and get them to see. And therefore, as a combination of not having the addiction which keeps them locked into the, inter the interaction with the narcissist and their own differing traits, they simply look at it and think, this is not a good use of my time. I'm worth more. I need to go and do something else. I'm not bothering with this person anymore. They're a turd. They're a douchebag. They get on my nerves and leech of my time, my energy and money. I'm not sticking around for that. And away they go. In effect, the normal has a decent account of themselves to think, I'm worth more than this, and therefore I'm just going to walk away from it. The empath is invariably, despite what they might think, plagued by issues with regard to their self-esteem. This invariably has been caused by the imprinting, whereby a parental narcissist has caused that individual to have a low account of themselves, to have low self-confidence, to therefore have self-esteem which is on the floor, which makes it all the easier for a narcissist to exploit that. Whereas the normal and narcissistic people and indeed other narcissists are more readily able to walk away from an entanglement with a narcissist, the empath really struggles. This is because they simply can't let it go. You might think that that's quite a narcissistic trait, the fact that they just won't let something lie, but it isn't. It's actually something which is the chain of attachment that occurs with the empath. The empath will, for instance, want to try and sort things out. Because of that low self-esteem, they will invariably blame themselves. Am I at fault for causing this relationship to founder? It was brilliant in the beginning and now it's gone wrong. What have I done? The empath engages in the self-reflection and self-examination to consider what it might be that they've done to cause things to go wrong. Often the narcissist will deal in a grain of truth with regard to the allegations, which then pr causes the empathic victim to scrutinise their behaviour. I recognise what he has said, and that aspect is true. I can be somewhat needy. Is it my neediness that has caused this relationship to go into a dark place? Maybe I've been asking too much of this person. Maybe I've been too selfish. Maybe I haven't been accommodating enough. Maybe I haven't concerned myself with their needs. And thus, the empath is gripped held in place by that chain of attachment as they consider what they might have done wrong. A normal will just think to themselves, I gave the best of myself and it wasn't good enough for them. I've not done anything wrong. This person's an idiot. I'm gone. But for the empath, they engage in that self-flagellation and consideration of their own activities. In other instances, it's, I need to make this right. Whereas the normal will think, Relationships sometimes don't work out. Let's not sweat it. I'm out of here. The empath can't do that. They're plagued by guilt, the corruption of their empathic trait of honesty. I feel bad if I walked away without trying to solve it first. I've given vows. I need to adhere to them. 
I feel that I'm partially responsible as well and therefore I ought to work hard to try and resolve this conflict that has arisen. The empathic trait of the desire to heal and fix becomes corrupted by emotional thinking as that chain of attachment is yanked, keeping the empath interacting with the narcissist, trying to solve the unsolvable. Often, the empath has no idea that they're dealing with a narcissist, and in the circumstances, they continue to flog that proverbial dead horse, trying to find a solution to something that they don't even recognise what they're dealing with. In other instances, the chain of attachment is linked to narcissistic traits of pride, of vanity, of anger, of argumentativeness. I'm not letting this person treat me this way without giving them a piece of my mind, thinks the empath, for once standing up for themselves. I'm not letting this pass any longer. I need to tell them that they're out of line. This is particularly the case where the narcissist is revealed to the empath so they know that they're now dealing with a narcissist. Rather than think to themselves, goody gumdrops, at least I now know this information and I'll use it to my advantage, there is, driven by emotional thinking and the corruption of the truth seeker trait, that often irresistible desire to turn around to the narcissist and say, I know what you are. And thus, spend time, wasted time, trying to convince somebody who is programmed not to see it, that they are indeed a narcissist. Sitting down and explaining to them, sometimes in a moderate and accommodating fashion, other times tinged with anger, that you are the problem, you're the narcissist, I know this now, and I want you to know that I know this. Once again, a chain of attachment between the narcissist and the empathic victim. This is something we exploit. The fact that you are unable to walk away, it's a weird kind of paralysis in a sense. You're paralysed by not being able to depart the interaction with the narcissist, but you're not paralysed because you continue to do something. You continue to try and resolve the conflict. You try and get to the heart of the matter. You try and sort out what the arguments are about. You look to pour oil on troubled water. You want to have a go at the narcissist. You want to show a bit of pluck and spunk by having a go and explaining that you know what they are and to list all of their awful behaviours and explain what all of this means. There is much to be said for you fighting these urges and recognising that all you're going to do by having that chain of attachment between you and the narcissist remain in place is for you to provide fuel to the narcissist, which is what we want. You'll, of course, in some instances, be threatening our control, so we will then have to lash out at you. But in other instances, where you are issuing a mea culpa or seeking to fix things, you're invariably demonstrating that you are under control and again given us what we want. You're being abused, but you don't act upon it. You stay. Because your self-esteem, being so low, causes you to believe that you're the problem, that you're at fault, that you should do something to sort this out. And you seek validation yourselves from the very person that continues to crush your self-esteem by belittling you, by insulting you, by invalidating you. The chains of attachment are strong. Unlike non-narcissists who find it far easier because they don't have the addiction to walk away from the ensnarement, you as an empathic victim really struggle. Whether it's the chain of attachment to, to fix things, to relay the truth of what's going on, to get to the truth of what has happened. Whether it is to unleash your anger towards the narcissist. Whatever it might be, you're staying attached and you have to stop it. You have to sever those chains of attachment and fight the urge to remain involved with the narcissist in those different forms. Whilst it is often a powerful force that's trying to cause you to remain involved, you have to recognise that all you're doing is giving the narcissist what he or she wants, and you're increasing your own emotional thinking by remaining in the arenas of interaction, and thus making it even harder for you to retreat and move forward. Whatever is telling you that you need to have some form of involvement with the narcissist, it is emotional thinking. It is not logical. And you are bound by those chains of attachment, unlike other categorizations of individuals. 
know it, recognize it, and most importantly of all, utilize my work to do something about it. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.